Welcome back. Uh, Power Infrastructure Investment Trust in the grid has won two interstate transmission projects worth over a thousand crore rupees. We have Harsha, the CEO of Indigrid, to uh, give us some more details on this. Harsh, thanks for joining in. Season's greetings. Wish you a happy new year. Uh, can you tell us more about these projects? I mean, uh, what, are, what is the timeline by which they start uh, hitting the PNL, and uh, you know, uh, where do they take the order, uh, the overall uh, order book? Thank you, and uh, happy new year to you too. These two projects put together are approximately a little over thousand crores of uh, size. So it would add uh, approximately three percent to our AUM, which is around twenty-seven thousand crores as on date. And uh, these projects have construction timeline of approximately twenty-four months. So they will start giving in uh, DPU or other EBITDA to our overall uh, cash flows from uh, two thousand and twenty. 627 and uh, that that's uh, i think this put together uh, augments our capability to maintain a dpu and increase you you said that your uh, total aum with these projects has reached 27000 crores uh, what is the visibility you have in terms of how you you're likely to end the year and the you know the visibility onto the new year fy25 then yeah so 27,000 crore does not include the 1,000 crores. 1,000 crore will okay. get added uh, over the next 24 months. But I think if, if I just look at last 12 months, we've added uh, 4,000 crores of renewable energy assets. Uh, plus, additionally, we are adding this 1,000 crores of pipeline. So in all, about 5,000 crores in 2023. Uh, so we are pretty happy with our progress on that front. We also raised around 1,100 crores of capital, which uh, keeps our leverage to only a 60% net debt to AUM. Which allows us to, you know, do another five six thousand crores of acquisition without uh, raising uh, additional capital. So we are pretty confident and bullish that uh, we would continue to grow our portfolio in two thousand twenty four as well. Okay, that's uh, good to hear, and I'm sure the street will be happy to hear that. Harsh, uh, just a word on one of the projects because it require it includes the construction of two substations as well. So does that mean that the timeline will be longer? Is this also going to be within 24 months? And then what do the financials look like in this case? Oh, so uh, 24 months includes both for substations and transmission line put together. So it, it doesn't change. It's a project is combining of substation and transmission line put together. And the financials is uh, both these projects when completed, we are, I would add approximately 115 crores of revenue to our uh, top line which is approximately 2,700 crores. Mm, okay. Uh, can you give us an update on, uh, you know, uh, your renewable acquisition that happened some time back, uh, uh, VRET, VRET, if I'm getting the acronym right. And also, what, what are the plans on the renewable sides? How much of the portfolio right now is renewables? How much more will you be adding? And what does that do to the payouts? Uh, I mean, does that have a, a positive incremental impact? Great. So right now we have approximately 670 megawatts of uh, solar portfolio, which is renewable portfolio. And this constitutes approximately 17% of our assets under management. Uh, we can additionally acquire another 300 to 500 megawatts of uh, renewable portfolio, which will bring closer to 20, 25% of our portfolio. And we do see a lot of opportunity in this space as well. Uh, recently, we also got... Uh, a battery energy storage acquisition or other bid that we won just a, a couple of months ago and we signed the agreements for that. So that will also come in line in 2025. Uh, in terms of financials, uh, based on the renewable energy portfolio that we acquired, we have already increased our distribution per unit to 14.2 rupees a unit, which is uh, almost like 8% growth over last year. And 14.2 uh, rupees a unit is, has allowed us to consistently grow our DPU over the last four years. So we've been growing around 3 to 4% year on year. And this year, we have been able to do almost 8% DPU growth uh, just on the back of this large acquisition. Okay, got that. Uh, Harsh, just one final word on the debt. I think last time we spoke, net debt was around 17,000 uh, crores. So can you tell us what the plan is in terms of, you know, what we can see by FI24? And uh, where do you think it will stand maybe in the next year as well, if you have some uh, targeted timelines on that? Sure. So it, it changes based on our acquisition profile. Right now, the net debt has gone down by 1,000 crores because we raised that capital. Mm -hmm. And uh, but we will deploy, we will raise additional debt and acquire more assets 
our business model depends on maintaining the leverage between 60 to 70 percent and uh, when we have closer to the limit of 70 percent we raise more capital to create headroom and reduce net debt but the most optimum returns are generated between when we keep our net debt to AUM 60 to 70 percent right now we are at 60 percent net debt to AUM which allows us to you know acquire another five six thousand crores of projects and when we acquire them we'll raise capital and bring it back to around 60 percent so 70,000 crores is an absolute number uh, but you know as we acquire more assets it goes down as a net debt as a percentage of AUM so we will continue to churn this cycle to increase our uh, DPU for unit holders. okay all right uh, got that we'll leave it on that note for today thank you very much for joining in and good luck with the plans uh, in 2024 well, that's uh, Indy Grid. We'll take a break right now, come back on the other side and uh, talk technicals. The market's been facing relentless pressure since the morning. So we'll get to Mitesh in uh, to figure out some trades.